Hello folks, today is Friday, October 15th, 2021. As usual, my name is Jake Baldino, here to talk about all the video game news that has been going on throughout the week. Let's get you guys caught up. We got a great show for you tonight. Why do I sound like a cheesy late night host? Ooh. The first bit of news is just something fun and small we'd like to share. Uh, it seems like a lot of people have been really enjoying the show, Squid Game. It's blowing up on Netflix across the actual world. Uh, so it has made its way to GTA Online. Now, GTA 5, GTA Online, there's lots of talk about Rockstar Games right now and uh, the fact that they're still not making GTA 6 and everybody's really mad, but for the people that are playing GTA 5 Online, they seem to be keeping themselves occupied. Uh, specifically here with this we wanted to share, this is uh, via YouTuber Vadact, if I'm getting that right. He posted a breakdown and a full playthrough and, and like a really good framing of a squid game recreated in Grand Theft Auto Online with some mods and just some really impressive stuff. Uh, just the way it's shown, uh, the character models that they have implemented here, the different game modes here that like reflect the events in the show are really, really impressive. Full disclosure, haven't seen it yet. There's too many video games to play, okay? And too many spooky Halloween movies to watch, but I'll get to it. Still shout out to this YouTuber and uh, the modders for creating this. This is really cool. If you wanna check it out, like everything I'll talk about today, it's gonna be linked in the description down below. Also, uh, while we're on the topic, uh, the leaks keep coming for the Grand Theft Auto trilogy. It has now been officially confirmed by Rockstar, uh, but we don't have much details about it yet. But the trophies and achievements have leaked and they're actually pretty cool. Some of them are pretty cleverly named. Uh, and also uh, with the fact that that has leaked, seems like maybe the game is on the horizon. There's also lots of talk about the pricing. Uh, there have been some leaks as well. Uh, reporting that the game is $70 US retail, uh, which a lot of people are questioning considering how old the games are. I think we need to see if there's any real remastering work behind them. It's also worth pointing out Rockstar Games has delisted the original versions of the games, which kind of sucks. Like always, of course, we'll judge the final product. Uh, we'll have a before you buy on it whenever this thing comes out, but uh, yeah. Now in other news, more businessy type news, EA and FIFA. Now, as much as I'm not a FIFA fan, I am always curious to see just how EA makes people more mad, uh, but it seems like this time they're kind of getting ripped off. So uh, the way this has been working out is that EA needs to to renew the FIFA license. For the last two years, uh, they have done kind of like renewal negotiations, but now comes the time to renew the actual use of the FIFA name. Now, FIFA, of course, is a massive worldwide football organization, uh, and apparently they want $1 billion! Like, actually a billion dollars. That's a lot of money. And this is specifically for the naming rights. And this follows up reports from last week with EA apparently considering kind of rebranding the FIFA games into something else, because this is actually interesting how this works out. So uh, this is just $1 billion for the naming rights to essentially call the game FIFA. There are separate negotiations and separate licenses for the players, uh, the different uh, football clubs, uh, all that stuff, players, likenesses, blah, 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 blah. Uh, that is all separate and negotiated stuff that EA has done. And and has like normal. It's just whether or not the game is going to be called FIFA. Pretty interesting considering that name does sell those games. As much as people complain about those games, they sell bajillions. So I'm curious to see where this is gonna go. Still, a billion dollars. That's like an inconceivable amount of money for something like that. Anyway, something else fun that is worth sharing is uh, Ed Boon, one of the creators behind Mortal Kombat and NetherRealm Studios, uh, took to social media to point out that uh, they first started working on the original Mortal Kombat game uh, at this time. So now it's technically, it's like 30th anniversary anniversary. Not the game release, but when work started on it, which is pretty intense. And he shared just a bunch of cool behind the scenes snippets. Now, some of this information was known already, but you know, not everybody has seen all of this and it is worth highlighting uh, specifically that he shared some behind the scenes footage of them actually uh, m m essentially photographing the characters in the first game, Scorpion specifically, and they have actual video footage of them coming up with Get over here, like no joke. You hear Ed Boon, Tobias, other NetherRealm guys uh, behind the camera uh, directing the actor to the point where Ed Boon literally just says, what if you just did this cool ass move? We'll just let it run here. You know what would be a cool ass move? One more time. All right, that's cool. That was cool, man. What was that? You something like that, like an arrow or whatever. I think this is just really cool to point out that sometimes some of the most iconic and creative moments are, are, are just brought about by people just collaborating and coming up with cool stuff like, what if you did that? And then something iconic happens. Okay, so then like, what if you just fell off your chair? 
Let's go. Also worth highlighting, uh, speaking of, uh, you know, Warner Brothers properties and stuff like that, DC Fandom is going down this weekend, which is the big whole DC Universe stuff. We're going to get new looks at movies like The Batman, which I'm very excited about, but also video games. Uh, so expect some new looks at Gotham Knights and Rocksteady's Suicide Squad, which is, it's like, it's about time. I'm looking forward to that. So uh, we'll probably talk about that next week. Hey, next up, this episode is brought to you by our longtime sponsor, Vessi. These sustainably made and waterproof sneakers have been impressing us for over a year now. Not only are they extremely practical and good in a ton of situations, they're also super comfortable. Most notably uh, with their newest shoe, the Everyday Move. I've actually been rocking these since they launched not too long ago. Uh, they're the most breathable ones yet. Uh, they have a little bit more of like an, like an athletic arch support, but they're still super comfortable with this thick sole I really like. And it's worth noting all Vessi shoes are 100% waterproof. Yet thanks to their Diamond Tex material, they're still breathable so you don't get sweaty feet. They're basically unkillable if you're in some mud, some snow, some rain. Uh, just wipe them off and you're good to go. They come in a variety of different sizes and colors so there's a shoe for everyone and they're always selling out and they're always launching cool new limited edition colors. So if you want to check out the Everyday Move and other Vessi sneakers, go to Vessi.com slash GameRanks and use our code Game ranks. Once again, that's Vessi.com slash Game Ranks. And thanks to Vessi for sponsoring our videos. In other news, just this morning, we got a Nintendo Direct that Nintendo promised, uh, specifically giving us a new update on Animal Crossing. So uh, with Animal Crossing, there is a new thing rolling out, like a new update, a free update, November 5th, uh, with some content updates and little things like that. There's a new island with some features. There's boat tours. Uh, there's the roost. Just other little small things like that. I feel like the little wiggly fire hydrant guys from Animal Crossing and the cacatoires from Final Fantasy like should hang out. They're basically the same thing. <laughs> they, should, they should get a drink sometime. Yeah. There is also a bigger, much more substantial update as well dropping that same day that's going to cost $25 DLC uh, that's adding a bunch of new stuff, more creation stuff, more opportunities for creation, more places to go. And that expansion is called Happy Home Paradise. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, Nintendo had announced that new tier of Nintendo Switch Online that costs more. This is going to be included in that if you pay for that tier. And now they officially announced the pricing of those tiers. It's on screen here. Seems a bit pricey. I don't know if I'm gonna jump for it, but I wanna hear what you guys think in the comments. Also, in some dumb news, but just silly stuff I like. Uh, remember the Xbox fridge, the Xbox Series X fridge thing? Uh, well, Xbox is now officially rolling out an Xbox Series X mini fridge that you can buy. Uh, Pre-orders for this thing are going live October 19th, and apparently you're going to be able to get it by the holiday season. It's a hundred bucks. It is a Target.com exclusive as of right now, it seems. And uh, yeah, <laughs> they went for it. Props to them. Do we need it? No. Do I need it? No. Am I going to get it? Maybe. Uh, it'll be the perfect thing to score my favorite gaming snacks, uh, the Bodega Barrels. Ecto cooler and vodka. In some cool news, uh, we got some new Dying Light updates. They had another like event thing. Uh, previously, they announced that like Rosario Dawson is in the game. Whatever, man, cool. Uh, but this new update highlights uh, some of the settlement stuff and some of the buildings. So in, in the outposts, essentially, there are going to be abandoned buildings and you're going to be able to level them up and build them into actual resources for places like a school, a medic, like down to a bakery, stuff like that. And all of these are going to come uh, with different bonuses, different quests, new vendor items, and stuff like that. I like that type of stuff. I think really since Dark Cloud, I've loved RPGs and coming back to a town and making things uh, to like Assassin's Creed and building up Ezio's villa. So I'm pumped for features like that. Uh, Techland has also not stopped. They've announced that the original Dying Light, uh, there's new Hell Raid content coming as well as they just like randomly, they just tweeted it out. Uh, there is a next gen patch coming for the original Dying Light because the original Dying Light on consoles, starting to show its age a little bit, so an update for PS5 and Xbox Series X is pretty welcome, especially if you want to revisit before the next one comes out. Oh, and in an interview, uh, I wanted to point this out, uh, Video Games Chronicle spotted this first, uh, but an interview uh, with Paradox Interactive Head. Apparently, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 was almost scrapped. So uh, when Paradox Interactive apparently picked this up from its previous developers, they had a big long meeting about deciding whether or not to scrap it. Thankfully, they did not, and hopefully we're still going to eventually see that game, but it is yet another bullet point in a long story about the troubled development of this game, which is unfortunate because it's one I'm very much looking forward to as someone who likes the original PC joint, as well as 
just vampires in general. If you wanna read that, that's linked in the description down below. But also worth pointing out this week, uh, Splash Damage, uh, who made the uh, Gears RTS games, Gears Tactics, which was actually a really good game, uh, they are working on a new sci-fi IP. It's worth pointing out just because, hooray, new thing, new game. Not a sequel, not a remake, just new intellectual property. And I know people always are looking forward to that, so you just gotta look for it in the news. Here's a good example. Hopefully something good comes of that. You know, wish them the best of luck. But also in some surprise news, uh, Reset Era, or Reset Era, however you say it, I've since it's been made, I've never really known how to say it. They have been bought for $4.5 million. The popular gaming forum type place is now owned by a Swedish company that owns uh, other kind of MOBA themed websites. And they intend to essentially just make money from the advertising and subscription revenue that R Reset Era already brings in. 4.5 million is a lot of money, but for something like that, maybe not as much, but also it's just a forum. I don't know, I, I have no concept of money when it comes to expensive shit like that, but it's interesting that they got bought. I never would have seen that. It's like a big company coming around and buying NeoGAF. Still, I thought that was pretty interesting and worth pointing out. I wanted to share with you guys. I also wanna know what you think. I also just wanna know what you think about everything going on this week, uh, especially with the games that are out. Back for Blood is out this week. We put out a before you buy video for that. So let me know if you're playing that. Uh, it's definitely worth highlighting. It seems like some people aren't really into it and some people are really loving it. Surprise, another divisive game, but let me know what you're playing. We always ask in the pinned comment because it's good for research purposes, but like, let us know anything about the stories going on this week. Uh, what do you think? Are you gonna pre-order the Xbox mini fridge? Do you feel bad for EA having to pay a billion dollars for the FIFA naming race? Mm. Are you intrigued by the Animal Crossing update that Nintendo Switch Online higher price tier with all its benefits? Are you gonna pay for that? Are you watching Squid Game? Is that something that you'd like to recreate in GTA Online? L let's talk about any of this stuff down in the comments. We'll be down there as much as possible. We're always down there, uh, but things get a little chaotic. So if you want to yell at me, get at me directly on Twitter and Instagram at Jake Baldino and youtube.com slash Jake Baldino. But thank you guys for being here every damn Friday. Just get you guys caught up. If you have fun and appreciate it, all you got to do is click the like button. We appreciate it. Thanks so much, dudes and dudettes. Ladies and dudes and dudettes. Do people still use that? Whoever you are, however you are, uh, thank you for being here. I'm Jake Baldino. See you next time. Pizza's on me.